Hi guys, my name is Drew Brashler. I'm with Northridge Community Church. Today I wanted to teach you how to set up the X32 for recording into uh, Reaper, uh, which is a multi-track recording program. So the first thing that we want to do is get the uh, X32 connected into the computer via a USB cable. You can also do it Firewire, but I'm going to be teaching you guys USB today. So once you get that set up, you'll want to click on the Setup button right here at the top. And let me zoom in on this up here. And then you will want to go over to card, which is all the way over on the right-hand side. And we have these configuration options. We can either set up the interface with the FireWire or the USB. And this is the XUF card, uh, which comes standard with most of the, pretty much all of the X32s. Um, and so we have this configuration. So we have 32 in, 32 out. The next one is 16 in, 16 out. The next one is 32 in, 8 out or 8 in and 32 out. So depending on what you're wanting to do with this or how many channels you're wanting to record at one time, you can set it up um, with that way. When I'm using the board, I'm wanting to be recording um, pretty much all 32 channels. Uh, say you wanted to record a Sunday service, that way you could uh, take it over and on a different day have a guest, uh, a new sound tech come in and practice mixing a Sunday service, say on a Thursday, um, and then you wouldn't have to worry about um, if he messed up or, you know, wanted to change some things and make things sound terrible, kind of give some different, uh, different avenues for learning there. So we're going to go ahead and set it up with 32 in, 32 out, and then we'll press set. Now we're going to go jump over to the computer and um, start looking at this side of things. So this is Reaper. Um, this is uh, the first thing that you'll come onto. Um, usually there would probably be a track um, in here uh, if you just selected it open. Um, but we want to set up Reaper to see the X32. So we'll want to go to Behringer and to the X32 page, and then we'll go down and click Downloads. And then we'll scroll all the way down until we see the USB driver. Um, and so that's currently 6.13.0. You want to download this, install it, um, and it will ask you to disconnect and connect your uh, X32. And basically that is sitting down here in the control panel right here. And we can open this up. And so we can see that we're connected to the XUF with that serial number. Uh, we see our input devices, which we can change these names um, if we want to. Uh, output channels, and then we have some synchronization and some options here. I'm not going to get really into this much. Um, pretty much the way that it comes and installs on your computer is going to be default and will work with uh, the settings that you're wanting to do. So we're going to go ahead and close that. Now the first time that we um, set up Reaper, um, it's going to take a long time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to save that as a default. Um, and that way, you can come back and open up a brand new session, load the default X32 settings, which is what I'm going to teach you today. And then it'll have all 32 channels there on the screen, ready to go, and already synced to be able to record the different channels on the X32. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to Options and Preferences. Now, in here, uh, this is all of our preferences that we have inside of Reaper. Um, and we'll want to go to audio and then device. So it's right here. And then audio system, device settings. We're going to want to change this from direct sound to ASIO. And then, uh, depending on if you have a couple different um, ASIO devices installed on your computer, you'll want to go ahead and click this down and select the Behringer XUF USB ASIO. And once you, do, once you do that, you want to make sure Enable Inputs is selected. Your first input is going to be input number 1. Your last input is going to be input number 32. And then on the output range, your first is going to be output 1, and then your last is going to be 32. If they're doing a 16-channel version of this, you'll want to do 1 uh, as your first, and your last is 16. Um, and basically, you're wanting to create the same settings here on the screen as you had in the setup menu on the... Uh, on the X32 over here. So if that's set to 16 and 16 out, back over here, you're wanting to have this to 1 through 16. Makes sense. Um, sample request rate, um, we don't want to change this. We're wanting to re re be recording uh, in the program at the same um, sample rate that the X32 was on. Um, to change that, I'll show you guys back over here on the, on the soundboard. Uh, we would go to Setup. 
and then over to config, and we have our sample rate right here. So we either have 48 kilohertz or 44.1 kilohertz. Um, and so uh, depending on how you do your recording, you can set that accordingly. And let me switch over here once my focus gets, there we go. All right, so now we're back over here. So once we have those things um, set up, we can press OK. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add 30, uh, add 32 channels. So we can go insert new track and insert new track, or basically press Control T. So I'm going to go ahead and press Control T until we get to 32. 32. There we go. All right, so now we have all 32 channels sitting here. Um, so what we're wanting to do now is we're going to go to View and then Routing Matrix. And then this big, huge routing matrix pops up, which uh, I really wish the X32 had internally. Um, some other boards, uh, like some of the Yamahas and, and whatnot, have these where you can go click and route all your channels. But anyway, so um, what we have here is we have all of our inputs um, on the top um, and here. So this is all the channels that we have. So channel one is channel track one. Um, and then we have our inputs and our outputs. So our outputs is sitting right here, and our inputs is going to be over here on the left-hand side. So what we're wanting to do now is we're wanting to select track one to be on input one. And so we can do, uh, we basically just click. And so we move these down. So then we can see that four is going to be going to input four, five, six, seven, eight, Basically, do this all the way down. And if you click this again, you'll notice that it actually enables the record uh, mode. So you can enable all of the channels to be uh, recorded uh, from the screen if you'd like. But you'll notice if you have one clicked, it will be enabled to record. So don't double click them if you don't want to. Okay, now we're wanting to route the output. So now we can see our track 1 through 32. And we're going to go scroll over until we see output 1. Um, now this is a stereo pair. Um, you don't want that if you're wanting to set this up for um, uh, basically the, uh, the virtual sound check. So uh, you can see that 1 is going to output 1 now. And you'll go down. Now, if you accidentally click on another one, you can make this channel go to multiple outputs. So if you accidentally do do that, you can click it and then press delete. And so click, and I'm click left clicking, I'm not right clicking, but you can right click and it will open it up as well. Um, so just make sure that you're hitting the right things as you're going down. Now the nice thing is we're going to be able to save this as a default, and that way you don't have to do this every time a band comes in to start recording. So now we can see that output 1 on our X32 is being from track 1. Um, and so as we go down, we'll see that all of the outputs are set, and we have all of the inputs that are set. So once that is done, we can go back, we can go view, Unclick routing matrix, and now we have all of our channels here. And so I am currently plugged into uh, input number uh, input number eight on the board. Um, so if we go down and find eight, we can then hit record, and we can see right here that I have volume. Check, check, check. So as I'm talking here, we can see that the, the volume is being set. Now if we want to, we can go view, and then we can go to our mixer, and then we can also see the, uh, the channel gain over here. Now if the X32 is uh, peaking and distorting, it will also be peaking and distorting here. Um, and so there is a little red box that will appear up here if we have a channel that it's going to be peaking. Um, and I'm not going to because I have the gain set correctly, so if I'm talking really loud, it's not going to be peaking on the X32. So 
when we're going to be recording, we're going to want to enable the record on all the different channels that we're going to be recording. And you can see that it's set by record by this turning in a red hue. And then also this is going to be um, glowing in a record. And then once we have that set, we can press record and then it will start recording all the channels that you have enabled for record. Once we are done with this, we can then um, play the channels back into the X32. But first, I'm wanting to save this as a, uh, as a default. So um, we're going to save this project as a template. So we're going to save project template right here. And so look at that. I already have it set up, but we're going to create a new template here. So NRCC uh, X32 template just like that. And so we can then press save. Now, if we go in here and open a new project, we are not going to save this. I can then pull up a project template. So I can go ahead and open up NRCC X32 template. And then we'll reload. And now we have all of our 32 channels sitting here. And then if we go to view and routing matrix, all of our outputs and all of our inputs are set. So let me show that to you one more time. So we're going to close all projects here. And we're going to project templates and then select NRCC X32 template or whatever you have yours titled as. And bam. So we can see our routing matrix has all of the outputs on the right hand side. And then all of the inputs are routed as well. And so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to open up one of my recent projects and show you guys how to get the, uh, the audio from the computer back into the X32. So um, when I recorded a Sunday, and let me get rid of this mixer window. There we go. So I have some tracks here. Um, basically, I have titled them. Uh, you can title them by double clicking or to double clicking in here, and you can title it what you would like. Uh, so this is my handheld one, handheld two, handheld three, um, and the different inputs that I have. And so we can see that we have a bunch of different audio here. Now the way to get this, um, now if we press play, it's going to play it back through the X32 card. And so to get that set up, let's go ahead and go back to the other, uh, back to the mixer here, and I'll show you it on this end. So what we'll want to do is we'll go on and click routing. And then we can see our inputs 1 through 8, and we can select where we're having this come from. And so we're wanting to scroll all the way down and see our card settings at the very bottom. Now, I'm not going to route inputs 1 through 8 because my microphone is coming in on uh, input 7. Um, so I'm not going to route that today. Um, but right here, so we have inputs 9 through 16. We're going to be pulling from card output 9 through 16. And so once we select that, we'll want to press Connect. And then 17 through 24, we'll want to scroll up to 17 through 24 and press Connect. And then input 25 through 32 is going to be on card output 25 through 32. And then we press Select. Uh, we can also do an aux. Um, the auxes can also see the card. So the, say you're wanting to have um, a band that's playing through click track. Um, and some, uh, some backing tracks, you can have them put that into their multi-track recording program, and you can play it from uh, their computer through the X32. Um, I would definitely test this a lot before, um, you know, have the band practice to it and don't come in on a Sunday just thinking, hey, you know, let's just do this uh, first, tr first try type of a thing. But if you were wanting to route the auxes in, you can select um, uh, one through two, one through four, or one through six, um, depending on how many of the aux channels you're wanting to pull in. So once 9 through 16, 17 through 24, 25 through 32 is set, and we'd also want to do 1 through 8, it, but I'm not going to because I'm recording, we can now press home and return back to the console the way that we'd like. And then we go back to the computer and press play. So let me go ahead and zoom out here. Not zoom in. And I will show you here. So back on the um, 
on the computer, we would just press the space bar, or we can press the play button. So we're going to press play, and we'll go back to the uh, view of the console here, and we can start pulling up the different things. And so now, what we can do is we can create the mix that we would like. And so I'll start from, from scratch here. And so say we wanted to mix the drums, which I have my drums on uh, channel 17 through 32 on the second layer. Uh, we have our drums here that we can start going into. And then we can do everything that we want to on these channels. So we can solo them. Um, we can affect the EQ. Basically, everything that we want to do on the soundboard normally in a live show, we can do with the recorded version from our uh, multi-track recording program in Reaper. Now, um, with the programs, this can also work with uh, Cubase, it can work with Pro Tools, Reaper, you know, pretty much any of the multi-track recording programs this will work with. Um, I don't know of any that it won't work with, at least. Um, so once we have that, we can go and, and create our mix and um, start training some sound guys on use of DCAs, we can train them on use of compressors, EQ, everything like that. Um, now, one thing that you will not be able to record is you won't be able to record any of the f effects built into the board. So effects one, um, all of these won't be able to be routed back into, um, into our Reaper. Um, one way that you can do that is take a uh, XLR cord on the back of the board uh, on one of the outputs and plug it back into an input. Uh, that would be one way. Um, but so uh, you won't be able to record the effects channels um, unless you route it back into one of the inputs. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, you can feel free to post below or send me an email or whatnot. But I hope that this kind of answered all of your guys' questions on um, just a simple setup for getting the X32 to record 32 tracks into a recording software and getting those 32 channels to play back into the console so you can do some virtual soundtracks. Thank you.